when we say words and think about it and let this metta friendliness sink into our mind and then we feel loving friendly feelings as we have repeated so many times when the body is relaxed mind is relaxed and the body and mind are charged with these friendly feelings that alone subside our hindrances mind becomes relaxed peaceful calm at that moment there is no any particular secondary object or secondary sign as in the breath but this mindfulness itself is powerful enough to relax the body and initiate initial application of thought because metta itself is a part of initial application of thought therefore it does not need any other secondary object when metta is fulfilled rightly started when we make metta a vehicle buddha call it yani katha yana means vehicle yani katha means making metta a vehicle for initial application of thought to start arise through that means we also gain the thoughts of feeling of generosity metta is not a kind of attachment clinging craving in fact craving is the father's enemy of metta near enemy uh, greed is the nearest enemy of metta father's enemy is anger or hatred greed can camouflage as metta desire can disguise as metta when something or someone is disguised as a friend it is extremely difficult to deal with that situation with that being or that mental factor and that is why metta uh, greed is called nearest enemy of metta and therefore when we cultivate true metta and use it as a vehicle the thought of generosity also arises thought of generosity is letting go of greed so when true metta arises and takes root in our mind we begin to feel true deep clear pure metta and greed fades away compassion arises as we mentioned many times these are the three initial application of thoughts 
and let the metta become strong enough to initiate these three thoughts. Out of that arises <coughs> our confidence in our own practice, confidence in metta itself, confidence in the power of metta. Metta can be strong enough to overcome hatred, the father's enemy of metta. When that happens, joy arises. When joy arises, naturally happiness arises. That leads to concentration and we gain absorption concentration. That is how metta is used as a subject of jhana meditation. At that point, when we use metta as an object of jhana meditation, we don't think of any particular individual. If we focus the mind on any particular individual, attaining concentration, gaining concentration becomes impossible. Because when we think of a person, the mind naturally begins to bring all the major and minor characteristics of the person. Numerous things the person has done or said, the way we associated with the person or that person associated with us, and so forth and so on. Countless things of the person can come to our memory if we think of a person. This has to be impersonal, impartial, almost without any substance, as I say, without any fuel, living, friendly flame, burns in us by itself. Bringing cool, calm, peaceful feeling to our mind and body. Without having to think of any person, that's how metta becomes an object of jhana meditation. So stay with that feeling of metta. If you have not got it, try very gently, kindly, skillfully to cultivate that feeling within you. A skillful cultivation of metta clears up a lot of impurities and mind can lodge in the feeling and you gain concentration. And I always wish you success in gaining this peace and comfort. <coughs>